We're back at the pretty North Hill Golf Club in Chiang Mai, and this is the round I played with Bo while Mo did some on-course practice. Some background here. I hadn't played for about five weeks. I was going to my dry needle doctor in Bangkok to recover from injuries in my lower back and trapped muscles. I'd been shadowing Mo for five days prior to this and I was dead. No energy, body finished. We also ate some frog and buffalo and were feeling a little squirty. The dude is a machine. From 7 a.m. to 9 p.m., the guy is working out, practicing, meditating, kicking ass, and taking names. I was 22 once too, but that was 33% of my life and 20 pounds ago. My goal for this round was to 1. Play conservatively, rarely hitting driver because there's water everywhere. 2. Lower expectations and react neutrally to shots. 3. See if all the practice with Mo would pay off. Every round there's some rust to shake out, but this one was 5 weeks worth of rust. Naturally, you're playing with pros, so you're questioning your sanity. Players, on the opening hole, if you get into a tight spot, please don't do what I did here. Just hit the ball into a delicious position to get it on in 3. The shot that I left myself with was diametrically opposite to what I tell the players to do. A partial lob wedge, my least favorite shot in all of golf. No one escapes the tuba. So five weeks off from playing on the course, I started to realize I had wasted the time on the range. I don't remember a single thing I felt there, but it wasn't my lack of memory that was messing me up. My mind was racing with a thousand things at once. This is what Mo was explaining to me. He finds with practice and grooving a solid swing, he eliminates the worry about the swing. He wants to quiet his mind to focus on things and not have his mind racing. He says things happen so fast and so many thoughts race around that you can't play your best golf with a head full of nonsense. What was I thinking about on this tee? I have no idea, but I know I was vibrating at a very high frequency. This unquiet mind stayed with me for the next couple of holes and you'll notice the rhythm is not there. Maybe you also have this problem in the beginning of a round. You've got a million things racing through your mind, not even golf related. And the first few holes go by in a blur until you get into the round and you find your feet again. Mo's mission is to simplify everything in his golf game. Every mechanic, every thought, every swing. It makes so much sense to me, but it's hard. This guy is a player. Yes, baby draw. Good shot. Good shot. Oops. Can't be. Way right. Can I? 
Around this time, I found my mind after losing it. It was behind a tree on the way to the ball in the wrong fairway. Then I remembered what I tell the players. I looked around and noticed the trees, the mountains, the clouds, the quiet of the north of Thailand, and I was immediately tranquil and at ease. There's nothing like a little pep talk in an adjacent fairway. But here's where I want to share with you players a single thought I eliminated from my mind forever. It's one I think can help you too. Have you ever said, well, I've shot my handicap already after six holes? This is a very, very dark thought. Then you start rationalizing like a crazy person. Hmm, if I can go level for the rest of the round, I'll be okay. Or something similar. We all know what happens, don't we? Well, I'm a recovering sabotageaholic, and I encourage you to banish the thought too. The easiest way is, don't count the score in your head as you go. I knew I had made some big numbers along the way, but I wasn't keeping score. Back to way of player mode. Channel your inner pro bow, fairways and greens. Oh, like a bow. That's better. That's not, <laughs> not good. After making the turn and using the beautiful bathroom facilities in the North Hill Golf Clubhouse, I felt better and was ready to take on the shorter but tighter second nine. It's such a short hole, so safety first, of course, players. After playing the safe shot, and as usual, with maximum concentration needed, Sevi player steros mode was initiated. I picked a bush to hit over and gave it a whirl girl. What a shot, man, on the green. That bunker is a great target, because I can't reach it, and if I hit the intended draw, I'll be center of the fairway with a wedge in hand. Aim for your shot shape, but to a place where even a straight shot will be good. Let's get the next one on the green, boys. Just get it on the green. See these greens? The first half is into the grain, then then uh, with the grain, then into the grain, then with the grain, into the grain. This is a tough putt, man. Tough putt in the hole. No matter what handicap we play off, guys, par is a good score. No, par is an excellent score. Take it and run. Caddy. A short par five, but the view is totally blocked out by the clever little fence along the right side. It makes the hole look so tight from the tee. There's plenty space left, extending into the other fairway, and on the right, a fade will be fine. 
If my confidence with the 4 or 5 iron was not high enough, the shot I would suggest and I would play would be a pitching wedge into the fat part of the hole and then hit a nice 58 degree into the green with a good look at birdie and a guaranteed par. This was a short par 5 and during the round I played it as a par 4 but wanted to give some birdie music. The holes are much shorter on this 9, but if you watch the video with P and Mo, you'll notice every course can be made difficult or easy depending on where the ball ends up. I hit it in a similar place to P in that video. This is where the game changes from handicap level to handicap level. The game with a wedge in your hand is so important, players. Make me so angry, ball. I'm so angry. On this hole, I want to avoid this tree and thought I took a short enough club to land it in the fairway. I clearly gave it the old steroid jerk and ended up in the pond. Luckily, there's a mindset you can get into called Idgaf Zen mode where you can swear at yourself for 30 seconds and then reset to focus on getting the ball in the hole in as few as possible. This type of situation would have pulled me back into mental meltdown mode years ago. Safe shot off the tee, in the water, what a loser. Shouldn't even be on a golf course. Reset, respect, refresh, redeem. This is a hole that I get one stroke on, so it's essentially a net bogey. Okay, course designer, you got me, player. Next few holes are mine. The fairway starts at a certain length and runs that length from left to right for maybe 150 yards. You just need to clear 220 or so yards along that line and you're golden. Swing for the fences. What is not easy is when you're talking yourself out of a shot. When we talk to ourselves in a way that encourages failure, I promise our brains find a way to fail. Go! What kind of a game are you playing here? I like it. Hello, darling. Uh, no. Sleeping. 169 iron. Really? Yeah. Yes, the bag is on the tee. What a bag. Promo did not believe I could get a 9 iron there. Little does he know my 9 iron is like an old 7 iron. This is a big realization for me. With my Mizunos, I would always be embarrassed because other dudes would be hitting a club less than me on every shot. I thought there was something wrong with me. I can't lie, my ego was bruised. But boys, since getting these Shrixen irons, I fully understand. They jack the lofts down and then stamp the same number on the club. So they can crank the loft of an 8 iron down to a traditional 6 iron loft and then stamp an 8 on the bottom. You try the club and boom, you're hitting an 8 iron your 6 iron distance. Sold. The iron number doesn't matter. It's the loft. 
Once you understand that people with modern irons are smashing it past you because of lower lofted irons with the same number on them, your ego can be mended again. Don't worry player, I felt it too. Sorry boys, the clip of me chipping didn't make it through the trip and I got it up and down for a par here. I was very proud of myself as the putting work did in fact pay off. I made some nice birdies there and after letting go of all the shizers spinning in my head on the 6th hole, I got back to being a player and played close to par golf. That's encouraging. Now how do we get over the past few holes? How do we quell the nerves, the tensions and the nonsense? Is it fitness? Is it our mental state away from the course? Are we even sitting down and saying, okay, be present, you're about to play a round of golf. Enjoy it, play safe shots in the beginning and relax. You're here for a good time, not a long time. We aren't very mindful, are we? We rush the tee, no plan, just whack and then take four or five holes to get into it. Let's sit in the car, or stand on the putting green, or just 30 seconds before the tea time, stand on the tee and close your eyes. Just tell yourself silently, I'm here to play golf. Be present, enjoy, relax, hit what you know, have fun. Open your eyes and smash it Oscar Bravo. And remember, everyone has a plan until they get punched in the face. <laughs> 